Good evening! Konbanwa, minasan! I am butchering the Japanese language here, live on YouTube. Oh, I hope this is going right. <laughs> I am not entirely sure, but if it is going right, hello! Good evening! I am not a vampire. And uh, welcome to semi. Semi soberly. I was trying to turn semi into an adverb. I don't know if that worked. Semi-ly? I don't think that's English. Uh, semi soberly talking about the fashions of Degrassi. I'm not sure if you can tell, but I myself have gotten into a little bit of fashion, hence my interest in talking about the fashions of Degrassi. Excuse me. I did try to make sure to pregame, so then I'm like, ready to go for this. <laughs> um, I've been more getting into like historical type fashion, especially the 30s and the 20s, really especially, uh, uh, which Degrassi does not take place in, so I will withhold my biases in that. But that's not to say I don't have other fashion biases that will become clear as we go along. Hello, Jasmine Fernandez! Welcome to the stream. Uh, guys, let me know about any characters whose fashions you in particular want me to talk about. I did bring up uh, a couple of pictures to uh, try to reference for different characters. And then I realized, huh, this actually will take a lot longer than I allotted time for. So we might have to look up pictures. Uh, doing it live. I know there are some couple of characters that I was already suggested to have a look at, so those are definitely on the docket, such as uh, Grace, Ellie, uh, Ashley. Kind of noticing a theme here. Um, of course, let me know. Um, I'm actually going to type this in chat. Uh, please let me know if audio is working. I, I'm pretty sure it is, but you never know. You never know, especially when people are still just kind of filing in, not having, like, not really engaging yet. You know, I like, I like people engaging. It's my channel, but, you know, I like, I like to entertain. That's kind of my whole shtick, I suppose. Well, until people let me know uh, what's what, um, I kind of want to preface, preface this. Oh, hello, Infamous J. Audio is working. Awesome. Love to see it. Love to see it. So, okay. Okay, so Infamous J is Mr. Balance, who is a member of the Discord server that I and my friends made, so you can chat us up on various things. Uh, I'm pretty sure a link is in the description or like invite codes in the description, not link. I've watched way too much YouTube lately. Sounds good. Okay. Well, glad to hear. Well, I guess I'll get out of the way. My, one of my big biases about talking about the fashions of Degrassi is I do not like early 2000s fashion for the most part. I do have my little, like, you know, favorite niches, like, you know, I'm a sucker for goth and emo, but otherwise, not my thing. I don't like it. No, 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 no. I don't like the hair. I don't really like how they do the crop tops. Ah, so much. Mm -mm. Hello, Jacob Crouch. I <laughs> apologize. I am bad at names. We def need more Degrassi fashion content. I don't know if I'm the person to make it, uh, but I am happy to just talk about it and just more from my perspective on it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I would love someone... Uh, I wonder what Degrassi, Degrassi fashion content would look like. 
I know there's definitely some character stuff you can get into with it and that's something that I've noticed as I considered like seasons like five and six and a little bit of seven of Degrassi Next Generation which will probably come up a little later unless you want to hear about it now let me know. <laughs> Hello Q. welcome to the stream! I, knew, I really never thought I'd be one of those people, but I have gotten so far in fashion that it's just like, yeah, let's talk about it now. Hey, I'm even doing eyeliner and I'm getting into lipstick. I never thought I would. <laughs> Maybe how it holds up today. Oh, there's quite a bit of it that does not hold up. Because, like, I mean, some of it, yes. There are certain aspects of especially TNG that you can see in today's fashion, but especially looking at what's, what do you call it, fashionable, um, in style now, like what's considered the norm, you can really see, wow, like you could really date stuff from the early 2000s, like how the hair's done. Uh, certain design choices like the thing that always gets me is like that um I can always identify as say 2007 especially because I lived it excuse me is the uh, sort of like layering of a baby doll cut shirt that uh, kind of comes right under the bust and then uh, flows out from under that layering that and something underneath it specifically like some long uh, long sleeved or just that cut of shirt that is very 2007 in my mind admittedly i'm not as up to date in a lot of modern fashion but to me that stands out as being very of its time are we taking into effect emma's thong from purple dragon episode anyways greeting from a fellow degrassi video maker hello cutter historical um <laughs> I am, I don't know very much about the history of underwear unless you want to talk about corsetry. <laughs> uh, so that's not exactly my wheelhouse. To be honest, I don't like TMI. I don't have very much uh, experience about thongs. I just, uh, they confuse me a little bit. <laughs> They're interesting. Uh, are we talking early Degrassi or late Degrassi? Because there are two very different beasts. Oh, we are talking all Degrassi, meaning including the 80s and 90s. Like, ah, uh, all of Degrassi is on the table. I know someone wanted to talk about uh, Stephanie Kay's fashion from like seasons one and two of Degrassi Junior High. So all of it. <sighs> Unfortunately, I'm not a huge fan of 80s and 90s fashion either. Oh boy. The Crassy just does not take place in a lot of time periods that I like the clothes of. And I feel bad for that, but what you can do about it? I like there are some aspects of each age that I do like. Uh, for instance, I was going back through some of the footage from Degrassi Junior High Season 1, which I think takes place in like 86, 87, and I like the sort of faux uh, Edwardian, Victorian, like, uh, no, Edwardian, uh, like, cotton blouses. No, no, would that be considered Edwardian or Victorian? I'm not sure, but, like, the, the, the white blouses, like, like, the whole puffiness, the high collars, like, that was pretty interesting. Can't say I'd like it on myself, but I did like that part. Other stuff, not so much. Oh boy. I I would I don't know if my internet can handle it, but I handle it, but I kind of wish the ch I could have the chat at much lower of latency so I can see how uh people react like when people are reacting to what. Unfortunately, my internet still sucks. They're supposed to excuse me, upgrade it at some point, but we'll see. They they said it was going to upgrade in spring. It is now summer. Degrassi characters in period clothing would be an excellent commission from fandom artists. So, 
Remember that one episode in like season six? Uh, I think it was when Spinner was cheating on Darcy with Paige. They actually kind of did Degrassi characters in period clothing. Uh, Darcy was a 1960s go-go girl, which like ignore like historical accuracy because I don't know how historically accurate some of the costumes were, you probably can't expect too much. But then again, okay, either way, um, I think Manny was like 1800s or something. I don't know, it was like supposed to be Degrassi school through the ages or something like that. Yeah. I should like watch that episode and like, part of me is like, oh, I should watch it and like give my thoughts on its historical accuracy, even though I don't I'm not really a fashion historian, but it might be funny. It might be funny to do. Man. It's just interesting thinking of Darcy and, and Go-Go Boots, because that's not really something I think about when I think of the 60s, even though like I know pop culture does. It's weird. All right, so uh, you guys let me know if there's any particular characters you want to talk about. I've got some in images that I can pull up. We can have a look at some of them. I've been trying to like keep an eye on my face on the YouTube studio. So then it makes sure that I'm still streaming because <laughs> I don't have a Tarbuck here to help me and keep an eye on the stream in that way. I can watch the chat, but I'm on my own. Hello, Eric. How's it going? Welcome to the stream. I'm right now taking suggestions for uh, some people and clothing to talk about. Uh, you mentioned you like clothes, fashion style. I do. I very much do. I don't like all of it. Like, I'm trying to think. Some things I wasn't too into, but he was just... He had that sort of faux Victorian, Edwardian, like uh, like the big puffy shirts kind of, and then the skull uh, suspenders. I liked his hairstyle and his little like a uh, goatee mustache stuff. Uh, and his glasses, oh, he just looked mwah, so cute. So like art student, but like alt art student. I love it so much. And that's probably why he holds a special place to my heart, even though he is not the best person, and he really did not treat Caitlin well. I feel for what became of him, but he just... He took the bad in his life and did not really... He, he used it to treat other people not too greatly. But I loved his fashion so much. Like, I think a way to my heart like, is to have good fashion in some way. Uh, Emma to check up. Sorry, I don't think I understand. Although, like, I gotta say, I was thinking about Emma's fashion throughout Degrassi, and some of it is a bit 2000s, you know, like, uh, the long sleeve and then pair it, and, like, uh, with a tank top on top of that, but... Something that I really like about Emma is that for the most part throughout the show, they really characterize her as Emma. Like, they went strong when she was introduced as, you know, environmentalist. The modern-ish hippie type, but then she keeps that a little going forward. Not as strongly as her early days on the show, but she still wears, like, earthy tones, like... But then she also like mixes it with a lot more, I guess, fashionable clothing, but she still keeps certain a aspects of her clothing that are very much her. Like I, I specifically think of uh, the opening scene, it was in season seven, I think it was the, um, what was it called? The Purple Dragon episode, uh, where she's walking and she's got this like a green like a knit sweater on and that's just so Emma even though it's not quite like uh, how she was looking when she started on the show it just screams Emma and that's something that I've come to realize to 
just today that I really appreciate about the show and that I don't appreciate about certain seasons like kind of seasons five through seven ish where it kind of feels like the characters lose a sense of how they dress like take for instance uh Ellie like she really tones down how she looks which is fine like a lot of people change how they look over time I mean I would not have thought like two years ago I would lean towards 1920s fashion I thought I was going to be forever a sort of emo femboy but here I am but I feel like the way they do they did it was kind of like they made her a bit generic like in season five she was kind of like generic semi alt ish but then after that she just kind of became I guess more professional like plain looking which kind of makes sense because she was trying to get into journalism but also like she was at her college's uh journalism space she just kind of maybe it was a comment of the time and the fashion of the time which I really should look into but she just kind of lost a sense of her I guess she just became kind of like everyone else which I think I feel most because she kind of became boring after season four. She, they, they didn't really give her a whole lot of interesting stuff to do other than pine after Craig and men, which can be made interesting, but it just did not work for Ellie's character. See, it's kind of different when Ellie is like, her life revolves around the men in her around her versus say someone like Claire. I don't know why. I'd have to think about that a little more. Uh, well, we have to touch on Manny, of course, and her iconic fashion choices. Of course. I'll get to that in a second, but of course. Hello, Matei Marie. How's it going? Uh, hello, Molly Johnson. Agreed. I understand toning down her clothing after high school, but I did, but I know I, ah, hold on, words are hard, <laughs> especially when you're, I think this is number two. I'm not drunk, but I promise, I'm pretty sure this is number two. Promise? I don't know. Is that something I can promise? I understand toning down clothing after high school, I know I did, but they did basically throw away her personality of clothes. Yes, that's the thing. See, people wear who they are a little bit in clothing. Now, you can make a character who doesn't, and, you know, that's a whole character thing. But people really express a lot about themselves and what they wear. And I feel like Ellie especially, like, she started the show, like, so against the grain. I can't imagine that she'd suddenly, like, care about looking quote-unquote normal uh like you know towards the end of high school so like where is ellie where is the person that we've known for four seasons why is she all of a sudden basically looking like ashley ashley end of season four of course um i mourn for ellie's fashion journey she had such a power such, she had such powerful looks she did and just like molly johnson said I can understand her toning down her look like everyone changes, but she didn't change in a way that made sense for the character. She just became bleh. Uh, Claire's uniform and after. Uniform to more cheerful. Oh, I love talking about Claire. Okay, so before we talk about Claire and then Matei Marie is talking about Maya, let's talk Manny. Manny, Manny, Manny. So... Hi, Scooter. I'm trying to stream right now. I'm doing a lot more talking and a lot less uh, drinking. So uh, the semi-soberness is not going to last very long if I don't get to it. All right. So uh, let's look at... No, that is the wrong folder. Oh, I... No. Oh, oh my God. Not audacity. Come on. I, I thought I had this folder up. Okay. Uh, Degrassi picks. There we go. Good boy. Good boy. Okay. So, 
Manny, Manny, Manny. I gotta say, I liked seasons one and two, Manny. She was adorable. Like, I don't know what it was. I guess... The, it was cute. She was cute. And cute in a way that the two, early 2000s just did not bother me. She was just uh, so adorable with her braids and... Oh, she's just so adorable. Which... You know, of course, is what she wanted to change about herself, but, you yeah, know. <laughs> Scooter, you've got fans. They say hi. Um, I thought I had one of, oh, no, I, oh, there we go. <sighs> Whenever I think of Manny's fashion change, of course, it's uh, <laughs> going, going to be the thong. <sighs> I can't say I remember ever seeing stuff like this, but then again, I think um, this came out in what, like 2002, 2003-ish? Um, so by that point, I was like in probably like second grade. So I never really got to see this kind of stuff. And if I did, I'd probably still not really be into it. I mean, Maybe it's because I'm ace, but I don't see the appeal. And I don't necessarily like it. Honestly, I like the look of high-rise jeans a little bit more, especially with uh, crop tops. Just, I think, I, I just like uh, how they outline the body. But I gotta say, I do absolutely love the hat and the crop top itself. It's so cute, so kind of bohemian, kind of not. Uh, it just so screams 2000s fashionista to me. It also helps that I used to wear hats kind of like that, only, of course, more gray and black. It's so cute. So cute. <laughs> Matamory says, This girl looks like she's going to be an award, be an actress, like Academy Award winning. And you can sell this for a million dollars because she's going to be famous. Yeah, not a fan of the thong look. Like, I just don't get it. I just don't see the appeal. It's just not for me. Like, just like how I don't like the um, high-rise straps of 80s uh, bikini bottoms, how they, like, sort of, like, um, shoot. How do I show this? I don't know. Demonstrate on my own body, I guess. Uh... Shoot, how do I go about this? Okay, so like basically how they would do is they'd come from here and go like a strong line up instead of like following the bikini line, like the underwear line that we're used to. I don't like that. And that's the kind of vibe the uh, thong gives me. Like, I don't care for that kind of look, okay? <laughs> Take a drink when Peter commits a crime. I'm gonna need more alcohol for this. I've already got more. <laughs> okay, sorry, Scooter. I had to go off on a weird tangent about 1980s bikinis. <laughs> the G-string was totally a uh, totally a thing. I th I think Paris Hilton started. Really? See. I kind of became aware of Paris Hilton, like, towards the tail end of her popularity. Also, hello, weirdo365, yeah. Okay, yeah. I just don't like that look. I don't like it. Bad. Moving along. Uh, let's see. I know. Yeah, the hat is really cute. I gotta say, I'm a fan of Manny's, like, uh, bright orange pink hats phase too like in general hats on manny look good it's interesting to me i don't know what exactly i like about it i just think uh cassie Steele wears it very well um like i don't know she just looks good in 
a fedora-ish hat and she looks good in a cowboy kind of hat. I just, I, I think it's the color combinations that go with it and also her long hair that really sell for me. Yes, the pink cowgirl look. Ah, I love it. Soft cowgirl energy. Perfect. Um, I also do like her sort of toned down like seasons three through four period where she is showing a little more skin, but like not quite as much as she was. Like she's still kind of owning her sexuality. Excuse me, with like the big earrings and uh, like pulling her hair back kind of, but it's not like, you know, she's like trying to advertise open for business, like trying to get guys' attention. Like, I kind of like that transition for her. I can't say I particularly love the style, though, because I've never liked the whole tracksuit sort of look. But Cassie Steele wears it pretty well to where it just flies under the, way, the radar for me. Yeah, her long straight hair helped sell that cowgirl look. Yeah, for sure. I don't know if I'd feel the same if it was, uh, like, left curled or, like, puffy or something. Mm. Wow. Okay. I drank only a sip of that. <sighs> that is bad, especially because uh, this is a vintage shirt. It can be machine washed, so thank God, but um, <laughs> damn it. Now it's going to smell like mango heart seltzer. It might be a problem that Tarbuck's not here. Don't talk about the environment. The environment is not sexy. It's not. I can give her that. Like, Manny's look was sexy. Not necessary. I won't comment further if it was a good thing or not. Um. Oh, this is a look I really want to talk about. And can I make this bigger? I want to... Damn it. I want to make it bigger. But basically... Uh, Manny's, like, soccer mom sort of hairstyle, I like it. And I'll defend it to the death. I'll fight anyone who says otherwise. I like it. Cassie Seal made it cute, okay? Just, I love how the different layers, like, framed her face. And the kind of bangs it gave her. Oh, she was so fucking adorable. I loved it so much. And it kind of makes me sad that a lot of people hate it because it's like, Ah, she's so cute. <laughs> okay, moving on. Um, and yeah, her final uh, sort of like transformation um, just looks good. Like, I feel like her her uh just looks good. I don't care for the short ur bangs, but that's a sort of me thing. But I feel like she just has good style in later seasons. Wait a minute. Except, except for Blonde Manny. I cannot get behind Blonde Manny. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm, I'm sure most people uh, actually agree with me from what I've been seeing on Reddit. But I cannot get behind Blonde Manny. Uh, on my way to my twin son soccer game with Clementines in my first kind of look. That's an oddly specific image and I love it. <laughs> yeah, I mustn't forget the blonde version and I almost did. And then I, like, as soon as I pulled it up, I was like, I forgot blonde Manny. I'm glad it did not last, okay? <sighs> I did... I, I... I just don't like her complexion with blonde. It just does not... <sighs> does not work for me. Uh, the blonde is bad, but I do think she looks great with bangs. I like her look in final appearances a lot. Yeah, I do too. I... I also appreciate when she comes back, um, I think it's in season 9 with a lip ring, like, that was cute too. I like it. Alright. 
Let's go back in time. Someone wanted to talk Maya. Oh, and Claire. Shoot. Okay, Claire came first. So we'll talk about Claire. And not because I am biased for in her favor. That is the case. But I, that's not why I'm choosing this right now. I did actually pull down Claire's stuff. Claire, Claire, Claire. I thought she looked cute in season nine. I did kind of like her schoolgirl uniform, especially because I just like the style of schoolgirl uniforms. Like, the only thing I miss about not being able to continue in Catholic school past the third grade is not being able to wear the schoolgirl uniform anymore. But other than that, like, Catholic school she did she did pull it off she was cute in it but it made sense she had a change I do think she was very cute like of the era in season nine but I gotta say my favorite uh periods uh were it's not blonde it's yellow let's get this clear that is true that is true I've been watching a lot of uh hair fail videos by this one hairdresser and apparently the words we use for hair isn't quite right uh i will give it looks better give her that looks better in ponytail yep is this the vampires and declan's claire right yes it is and uh as someone who likes claire and who was into vampires I don't know what I'm really trying to say there, but, like, I know a lot of people find that cringe and, like, oh, wait, they do that, but, like, vampires are fucking sexy, yo. Even when they're not having sex. Like, even the Anne Rice, not very sexual vampires, they're sexy. That's coming from someone who's ace. Oh no, not the vampire storyline, exactly. Baby Claire, Catholic school vibes, yep. Ironically, in Canada, Catholic schools don't require uniforms. Interesting. There are two Catholic schools, Jeremy. I know one does. The other one, I've not seen students go in and, uh, in and back and forth from the little. So I don't know, but it's interesting. Claire's twilight phase. I mean... Most of us kind of had that. I never had it, but I guess I'm kind of having that now. But more with uh, Anne Rice vampires. I am going to legit listen to the audiobook of Twilight one of these days because I'm told from trusted sources it's actually a good book. And uh, it's kind of overhated for certain reasons. But, you know, not completely, but kind of, yeah. Okay, moving on. Season 10 Claire. Probably one of my favorite Claire's. She, again, as I said in my video, was it my video about her? I said it in a video. But if I were to wear like full on colors, this is the, what I'd want to be. Just, she's so cute, so lively, so fresh. Ah, and her curl, her, her little hair curls and how she often styles it, like, I've kind of achieved that hair now a little bit. Like, she wears it a little longer than I really want to keep my hair from now on. But, oh, I love it. Like, it's also of the time, but it's also, the, I, I think, like, the 2010 kind of time frame revolves like a uh, flips back into an era that I can get on board with some of the fashions not all like I don't like um girls used to part their like uh basically bring uh the hair in the middle of their head back so it looks like they don't have a part I don't like that I, I've never liked that but there oh there's a lot of things oh, to love about season 10 Claire I read the first Twilight Forever Go it was genuinely good and fun to read yeah, that's what I'm told. Outfit Screams 2013 to me. Kind of, um, a little bit. A little bit here and there, yeah. Uh, she's just so cute. 
uh, in the uh, school uniform phase of Degrassi 2. I think she somehow managed to pull off the khaki skirts very well. And of course, the curls, mwah, perfection. The little uh, flowers in her hair, great. Uh, da, 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 da. I thought I had a season 12, Claire. I thought I had a season 12, Claire. There's my season 12, Claire. I'm not drunk enough for this travesty. One Claire look I'm not a huge fan of is Claire with a wig. It just... It didn't look right to me. Like, it, it did look natural, but I just didn't like it. I like short hair Claire. What can I say? I'm a sucker for short hair. It's just... Some, like, I feel like I picked the wrong picture for this. Because this picture, it looks good. But other times, like, uh, the, 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 um, Thanksgiving episode of Degrassi, it didn't look great. And I did not like it. It especially looked like a wig on her. She just doesn't, like, the longer her hair is for the wig, the more clear it is a wig, I guess. Rick's Coven done much better. I, I do wonder if they purposely went for wigs that didn't look natural to Claire, so that, like, you know, because, oh, obviously she's wearing a wig, so then it doesn't get confused with her natural hair. I guess, like, um, like, to show what someone, like, without the budget of a TV show can do with a wig. Or, like, what kind of wig they can get, maybe? I don't know. Exactly. I would have, it would have, like, uh, Molly Johnson says, it would have been nice to see them play around the pink one. Or just other wigs, other than just plain brown. But I guess I can also see Claire not really being one of those people who'd want to. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Mutay Marie, God forbid we don't forget she has cancer, so it has to look like a wig. We can also do a fashion reaction to the promo. Maybe. I don't know if I get demonetized or crucified for playing the promos. Although, I have thoughts about the promos, too. And then... Seasons 13 through uh, 14, Claire, when she's using her natural hair. Ah, oh, so cute. I like it when it gets a little, little bit longer, like right here. But ah, I love the boyish haircut on women. I do. It's so ah, adorable. Adorable. One thing I don't like about this period of Claire, and basically most of the female characters on Degrassi, is like they're all wearing dresses and skirts. Like, it's like a fashion show for the most part. I think the only one I could think of who like um doesn't fit that is Jack but like she's kind of got the modern butch lesbian vibe to her kind of. It just like all again all the feminine characters look the same. It pisses me off like they just decided to go for one style and that's it. Now, I might be wrong, maybe they that's not exactly what they did, but that's how it comes off. Even Imogen kind of loses, like, her sense of fashion a little bit. Like, she keeps it a bit because, you know, she's the artsy type, so she does weird things with her clothes. But, like, Allie and Jenna and Claire, they all look the same, and you're trying to introduce uh, Frankie in this, and she looks like them. And, and, uh, Come on. This is bull. All right, moving on. Okay, I think uh, the next one after Claire was Maya. I do not have any pictures of Maya style, but I remember, like, uh, Matamri says, I remember really liking Maya's new style in seasons three through four of Next Class, but after watching it, it's still kind of a train wreck, but the straight hair suit her. I guess. I... In general, I kind of just like Maya with the curls. 
I guess I associate the straight hair too much on uh, Maya as being a symbol or like an expression of depression, which probably helps turn off that look for her. Um, for the most part, I don't remember ever disliking her clothing choice in seasons three through four. Um, I think she looked the cutest, like, in season 12 when she had the kind of, like, faux alt going on where she was, like, faux rocker but also, like, you know, cute. I don't know how to explain it. I liked her early, se her uh, season 12, I really liked her season 12 look. Uh, in general, I do like her with the curls. And, yeah, I think... I'm kind of by default prevented from liking her straight hair. Yeah, and heels on everyone. People in my high school wore skirts and dresses, but heels on daily basis. Yes, the thing that bothered me the most was like seasons 13 and 14 that came out um shortly after I got high school. And I see these Degrassi characters dressed to the nines and I'm remembering people literally wearing pajamas to school because they didn't feel it's like dressing up that day. Like, where the fuck was that? Why are we walking around like it's a fashion show? I feel like it got a little bit better in, uh, like, next class. Like, it looked a little bit more what people would wear, but also still had that kind of polish to it. But at least they weren't wearing fucking heels. Like, what the hell, guys? I'm definitely feeling the alcohol right now. <laughs> okay, um... Uh, da -da -da. A reaction to what the show called emo or alternative fashion over the years would be dope. Starting with Spike and maybe ending with Grace. Unfortunately, I don't think I could really make that video, uh, Jacob. I don't honestly know that much about, like, I lived kind of through emo fashion, but I don't feel like I'm qualified enough. Like, I think the closest thing they had to an emo emo character, like, I feel like Ashley was a little bit, like in seasons, season two, a sort of early like mix of goth to emo type character but the closest emo I think they got was Eli. I don't think they've really had a emo girl character as far as I'm like as far as I can remember. But I don't feel like I can really make that video either. Like that's just not something I'm very well versed in. I only have a sort of vague understanding of goth fashion and then emo fashion is just kind of yeah like I don't feel like Ellie ever really like she got close to the the emo look in uh season four but also not quite because you know she had kind of toned down uh some of her style to be more in general but just, I'm, I'm not qualified, basically. <laughs> um, does anyone agree what I'm talking about when I say Emma's fashion style was not popular through first se four seasons, but after season five, she gets more sensual? Mm. I wouldn't say she gets more sensual. I'd say she gets more following the generic trend a little bit. Like, that's just kind of where fashion took it to where it had, like, the V-cut shirts. I wouldn't... N nothing about how she looked uh, really says to me that it's sexual. Like, not anywhere near... Like, not even in the ballpark of where Manny, like, went. It just seemed more like she just was following just general fashion. Not, like... Still kind of keeping a little bit of Emma, but also just being modern. Like, and that 
is a little bit of what Emma always has been. So I don't think I'd really say that she got more sensual. Um, um, all right, we'll come back to Stephanie. I'll never get, forget Allie booking it down the hall after Bruce's phone. Her heels. See, that part I can understand because Allie was making a specific character choice. Like, she basically associated a high school with the look of, like, heels and, like, very specific kinds of clothing. And I feel like you can see the epitome of that in how she looked in early season 10. Like, she is way more dressed up than any of the other female characters in the show. Like, ah, uh, that was a good, good character choice there. Whereas in season 13, everyone looks like that, so it's not anything, like, it just sad. <sighs> Ellie, wasn't she kind of emo for a while? I guess, but I don't think she ever really fully got the emo look. Like, I'm trying to look through my pictures. Like, she was definitely alt girl, but not what I think of when I think of emo, you know? Like, I think this is the most emo she got but even still that that, that kind of screams a mix of other stuff like a little bit of kind of punky i could be totally wrong on this like i don't know very much about like the distinctions so i'm probably wrong on this don't take me at my word gotta go keep having fun also i'm gonna be famous okay bye bye my team Marie. we'll miss you All right, let's see. Who's next? Um, do -do 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 -do. Okay, I think. <laughs> Your thoughts on Stephanie's outfits from season one of junior <laughs> Shut up, phone. Wait, who's texting me in the first place? What is even, <laughs> I don't know what's causing that. Oh, that's the notification is. Okay, back to business. I'm a professional. I, 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 I silence my phone and you know, all that professional stuff. I feel like I'm that one person at the pub that just keeps ranting about, oh, and then they put heels on all the Degrassi characters. Like, what the fuck? Okay, but, but not the male characters, but, but. <laughs> I feel like that's what I'm getting to with how I'm, like, moving my drink. <sighs> but I feel like I'm more fun when I'm drunk. So, okay. Stephanie in season one of junior high. I don't like that look. I, I just don't like, it's some of the worst of the eighties to me. Like, I mean, I guess she wears it well, but how do I explain? I just, it's not for me. I don't know. I don't. I guess part of it, like, I feel like, you know, I get the sense of, like, how's the school letting her dress this way? Like, this is way more revealing than uh, anyone in my high school ever really dressed. And yet they still had the, you know, their skirts and shorts rule. But. Huh. Not the double pony. Good God. I don't know what you're talking about, man. <laughs> I don't know. But this just. I guess that's just what I keep thinking, and I guess she's also just not old enough to have the figure for this clothes, to be honest. Like, looking at that crop top, it's like she doesn't have curves, really. She's just too young. So just, it does not look good on her. Doesn't. 
I also, in general, don't really like the look of, like, tight, um, like, yoga pants kind of look. It's not really for me either. Yeah, she wore that outfit in eighth grade. I don't remember people in high school even looking like this. Like, god damn. I also find, in general, I don't like the big hair look of the 80s, so that doesn't help either. Like I said, I am biased against things 80s, and that screams 80s. So, of course, I'm not gonna like it. Cursed Euphoria Energies. I still have not watched Euphoria. Do you guys think I should? Let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll suffer through it for you all. For you. Age and going up through chronological. Just talking, really. I'm trying to keep a little bit of Emma, a bit of Maya, but I'm happy to circle back if you want to talk about those characters, or if you got characters who I've not talked about yet, let me know. I all of Degrassi is on the table. I can have opinions on anyone I want. Degrassi doesn't have dress code until it does. Exactly. <laughs> Fucking exactly. I feel like it did get better as it goes on. And like, I'm okay. I'm okay with Stephanie being allowed to dress this way for the storyline. But it's also like, there's no way she would have gotten away for, with this. There's no way she would have gotten away with this, even at a public school. Like, what the heck, guys? I mean, like, this crop top. No, this, uh, where is it? That short of a skirt. I would not have gotten away with that in high school. I remember shorts that were that short, and we got yelled at about those. <laughs> no, 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 Stephanie, you would not know. The skirt and the crop top. Mmm. Why is why are you why is this happening? And again, I just I think it's also part because I don't like sexualized clothing in general, much less on an eighth grader. So it's like, it's all, it looks wrong to me. I hate it. I don't like it. Like, I know why they're doing it because it's good characterization and it's important for her character, but I don't like it. I don't have to like it. Ah! Stream stop. Oh, never mind. Okay, thank God. Well, it's gonna pause for a moment because I need to use the bathroom. Sit tight, guys. Thank you for waiting with me. Let's keep this Degrassi fashion train and rolling. I think Grace is next. Let me know who you wanna do next after that. Let's roast him, toast him. Or maybe I'll just like him, who knows. Oh, oh boy. Try not to turn on to problems that upset you, oh, don't you know everything's all right, yes, everything's fine. <sighs> Scooter decided to fuck off, because my lap is not reliable at the moment. Um, okay. I got sent to the to put on gym t-shirt for having bra straps showing at my school. Yeah, exactly. That's what they do. In season 13, when you could see that Imogen wasn't wearing a bra, 
It's ugly, TBH, just ugly. <laughs> yeah. Sending up a prayer for their liver. I promise, I do not drink like this on the regular. It's basically just for streams. Like, even when hanging out with friends, like, it's every once in a while. I don't even get this much into alcohol. I kind of take it a little more slow, but for streams, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, that's a lot of... <sighs> Scooter deposit a lot of litter. Okay, I will take a pause from Grace, though, to talk about Heather Sinclair, the fashion icon, as Eric has pointed out. We never see Heather Sinclair, but we know she was dressed fast. I mean, why else would Paige hate her so much, other than that she was dressed better than Paige? Duh. Obvious. Like, all of the things I complain about here... Heather Sinclair avoided somehow, because she knew, she knew what was good fashion. I mean, she got a nose job, which is kind of yikers, but also, but, you know, other than that, she knew how to dress. Just face it. And Paige will go to her grave, lamenting that she can never have the fashion intuition choices that Heather Sinclair made that she can never understand how to dress like Heather Sinclair <laughs> gonna smoke up with you in solidarity <laughs> okay but do it safely I promise I'm doing this safely too after this I'm drinking a lot of water and going to bed probably gonna watch some Peter Pan no Boken, the Peter Pan anime and then going to bed <laughs> That's my definition of a fun Saturday night, apparently. <laughs> Talking to Chris Fashion and drinking alone. Well, not alone, because I'm with you guys and I've got a cat. So it works. Okay, so on Grace, I tried to pull down some Grace pictures, but I don't think I really got anything except for, like, this one. Basically, Grace was the gothy emo alt girl that I always wanted to be. Like, I love her so much. I love her from her various highlights, from, like, her just general style. Like, way back in 20, like, from 2009 to 2013, that's what I wanted to be. Like, I wanted to look like her. Maybe not the hair, because I like the hair on her. I wouldn't like it on me. But her clothing sense, those combat boots, that's what I wanted to be. But, you know, I never really got around to figuring out how to be that way until recently, now that I'm not really wanting to dress that way. But, uh Grace is perfect. I love her. Okay, her character is not necessarily perfect, but her style is perfect. I can't think of a look that I did not like on her. I even liked her pigtails. Like, I just liked how they were done on her. In general, she looked good. Yet she pulled off leather. That's hard to do. No, I'm not mad that she looks like a better alt girl than I ever could be. <laughs> I promise I'm not mad. But ah, uh, and her, her lip ring, her eyeliner with the, like, you know, the shadowy look around the eyes. I simp for her look. What can I say? It is chef's gifts. Hello, this is just a flashback. Uh, I wish I caught them from the start. Well, uh, <laughs> I don't know how interesting it was at the start, but feel free to 
Um, uh, watch back if you want later. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm so ready for the roasting of a century. Who do you want to roast? I have already talked about, um, Manny, bit of Emma, uh, Maya, Ellie. I've not yet gotten to Ashley. I do kind of want to talk about her, but I'm happy to go back and talk about anything you guys want. I'm good. Um, that is wrong. <laughs> Grace slays. There's no two ways about it. Egg exactly, exactly. Hello, Katie Fidel. Jack. I like Jack. I think the way I put her a little bit earlier was that she's kind of the modern butch. And I like it. Because, like, I feel like she's the butch lesbian. But she's also femme. Which is great, because I hate the idea I hate that people have the idea that in a same-sex relationship, there has to be a clear man and woman. That there has to be someone who acts masculine and someone who's clearly feminine. It's so bullshit, so heteronormative. So I love how Jack, like, she owns her femininity, but in a way that's not, you know, skirts and frills and all that. You know, like, Imogen can have that stuff, but... Jack will sport pants and, you know, the, um, excuse me, the hair braids. I really like it. And I think she rocks them. Personally, I think it's hard to wear the hair braids, but I think Jack does them well. <laughs> Hello, Upseed. Grace did kind of kill it. Yeah, she did. Like, I can't complain. <laughs> no complaints about Grace. Agreed. Yeah. Jack, I think she was a good modern quote unquote butch lesbian. Like, she's not the hetero idea of what a lesbian looks like where it's all, oh, she's just a fake man. It's, that's just how she looks. And one thing I gotta say, a bit of a tangent I do like about Degrassi is that they do do like um they try to do a good job sometimes of like you know sh not really having like you know the man and woman in gay relationships like they just have people in relationships like I specifically think of like say Zane and Riley or Imogen and Fiona like they're not somehow de-gendered or like reverse gendered because they're gay. They're just who they are and happen to like someone of the same sex. It's great. Yeah, Jack does pull it off. I gotta say, like, I've tried that look on me. I don't like it. Somehow, Jack's actress, she can do it. Only a little bit jealous. Just a little bit. Okay, um, who's next? Roast them! Toast them! I don't care. We're here for a good time. Not a long time. <laughs> I promise. On alcohol, like... I don't know what I was about to say there. I was trying to say two things at once. I guess on alcohol, I just say whatever comes to mind that I think is funny. And I just assume that's going to be funny for everyone else. I hope it is. Again, like I said earlier, my aim is to entertain. So if you... Are you entertained? If you are, then I am happy. Maybe I'm just biased because I don't like how she treats Imogen lol. I can agree and I can respect that. I like how progressive quote unquote liberated Jack is in a lot of ways but she's not she, she's not exactly the best person. She's a good character but she's not a good person really because she really puts 
herself and her fears and everything, her everything above her partners, it seems. Like, it really, like, some things she did to, to Imogen just weren't fair, and I don't like that. I like how she viewed certain things, but at the end of the day, I don't like how she treated Imogen either. For the most part, I love the LGBT rep in Degrassi. I agree. I think for the most part, they do a good job. Now, there's, of course, some parts where I think they could have done better. But, see, people always complain about Degrassi redoing storylines. But the thing is, the beauty of being able to do that is being able to redo them in ways that match the modern understanding of topics the way a modern person might address it. Like, the fact is, we use different terminology and think of sexuality and gender very differently from how we would have thought about it in 2003. The time when Marco came out is very different from today. Like, the way I had it described to me yesterday by, um, like, I don't know if she's a middle schooler or a high school teacher, but like middle school still sucks, just like it did before. But in high school, it's way more accepted to be gay, like way more accepted to be queer. You you can't just like leave it at what came like a uh, in Marco's days how it was to be a queer guy in high school. It has transformed so much. Like it's even transformed so much from like 2010 when Adam came out as trans. Our understanding keeps evolving and how we view certain topics just is different. That's one of the things I've learned a lot from like getting into fashion history and the history of queer people. Like queer people have always existed, but just with different language and understanding. And so it's actually really important that Degrassi can continue to tackle and retackle certain storylines. Like we need to keep having pregnancy, abortion, queer, every kind of storyline. We need to continue having that to match not only modern ideas of that, but also like see what different people like address that with. That's one of the things I want to make sure comes clear in my abortions in Degrassi video that everyone does it differently. And I'm going to make a series about like being gay in Degrassi, but like I want to make it clear that as time shifts, so does the, like how one is existing in the world. <laughs> It doesn't stay the same. So you can't let one thing, one storyline be the definitive trans, gay, pregnant, abortion storyline. You have to keep going. Tangent aside. Uh, for the most part, I'm like, uh, she's progressive to the point of being selfish, I guess. Yeah, she's kind of very liberal in that way. I don't know how it works in Canada, but it would be interesting to see New Degrassi tackle Don't Say Gay Bills. I, I'm not sure how to feel about that because Degrassi is supposed to be a Canadian show. And I think one of the shortfalls of the later seasons was it kind of tried to seemingly erase its Canadianness, which is a bit of a problem. But I also can understand, like, I'd love a show like Degrassi to address Don't Say Gay, the overturning of Roe v. Wade, all the things that are happening in the U.S. Because, to be frank, we, I don't think we have that kind of show. I've not seen Euphoria, but from what I've heard, it's not quite that either. We need a United States version of Degrassi. I don't know if New Degrassi is aiming to be that. 
I hope it's aiming to be the Canadian version because, like, there's a lot of overlap, but I wanted to stay true to Canada instead of trying to be marketable to the rest of the world. <laughs> Love the jean jacket. Yeah. Um, and it's more important than ever to have abortion storylines, truly. It is. I'm here drinking away my problems and trying to forget. Not necessarily trying to forget, but just do other things, because what can I do? The state of Indiana that I've made home has triggered a special session to assumedly make abortions illegal. Now, I know people and I know ways to perform illegal abortions, but I don't, like, so I'm going to be okay, but I worry for other people, people unlike me, people who don't, won't have access to safe abortions, people who will have to go back to the days of coat hanger abortions in order to try to take back control of their bodies, their lives. I hate this. So let's talk about fashion. Because this is too sad and I'm going to cry. <laughs> okay, I'm um, back to better stuff. Degrassi helped me understand what transgender is. Adam was such an important character. I agree. Like, I understand there's issues people take with the choices made with Adam, but I feel like Adam very much was, like, of the time that he came out in. Like, not only that, but he also helped me under understand what a transgender person is and just a little bit of how to think of someone like that. Like, before I understood that I was trans myself, like, I know I was, I did not view transgender people very well. Like, I didn't know how to think about them. But through watching Adam and seeing his story, I came to understand it more. Like, he gave me a gateway to investigate, to understand, instead of keeping... A, like transgender people as the sort of weird anomaly that people like claim they are you know it's very important <laughs> yeah we got on topic whose fashion should we roast um here one sec they carve the grassy charms that is the canadianness of it all they can't lose that i hope not uh Okay, Becky and Sean. I can't roast Becky. She's just a, a ray of sunlight. She, of all the cast, deserved to wear dresses. Like, ah, oh, I, I can't. Like, them dressing Becky in yellows, like, perfect character choices, man. I can't roast Becky. How could you tell me to do that? Ah, oh, I'm terrible at roasting. I mean, in general, I'm not really a fan of just straight hair, but it's fine on Becky. Becky's, ah, Like, you know, she had her bout of transphobia and homophobia, but she got better. And, oh, I love her in yellows and just happiness. And I love her arc, like, trying to recapture her happiness. Oh, I can't roast Becky. I'm sorry. I failed. Unsubscribe. Uh, banish me. Plan. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I like Sean's jean jacket phase before turning to Eminem in season three. Katie Feld says just a character and this is just flashbacks says I love Becky's colors way too bright now I need like I may be vintage now but I still prefer my blacks and reds and like kind of emo colors okay um 
Yeah, it, it was so good for a character. But Sean's jean jacket face, I do like that. I've never been into the Eminem style rapper face. I, 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 I can't say I liked it. <sighs> Excuse me. I never liked the style of guys wearing their uh, pants down below their underwear, like down below their bottoms so you can clearly see their underwear. Like, I understand that's like a reference to a prison thing. I always thought that was stupid. Like, why are you trying to glorify like basically legal slavery? I don't understand that. Um, oh, I love Slim Shady song, Sean. I wish I could agree, but I, I just, nah, nah. Like, Slim Shady Sean is the version of masculinity that I just, even like aesthetically attractive, it's just like, it's a look, but I feel like I should avoid you. Like, just, it just, it just gives like wife feeder energy, if that's, I don't know what the best way to describe it, but I don't like, it, ex it exudes the worst parts of toxic masculinity, I guess, uh, with no other way to describe it. I don't like it. And I guess like, um, it's also colored by the kind of people he hung out with during that phase. <laughs> so that's probably a good part of why I dislike it. Jean jacket was cool though. Like it was cool while also not being, like it was edgy without too sharp an edge. Like, <laughs> to use Sean's own words, butter knife. That's kind of how I view it. <laughs> uh, and on that note, okay, I will come back to Tristan. But on that note, can we talk about the time Liberty was trying to be a badass and dress as a character from Greece? It was cute. It was cute. It was kind of like, don't do that, Liberty. You, oh, you fool. But also, like, it was so cute. I, I love... I guess I love the novelty of greaser chick, like, grease look. I don't particularly like like it but also like it was cute it was it was a good character moment i i can't hate it okay i can't hate it i <sighs> okay so back to tristan I don't know. Tristan's style never stood out to me. It's just kind of like semi theater kid, semi just bland. Fuck. No, I can't be. I can't be dispassionate about uh, men's fashion. Hold on. Wait. Uh. Well, I just went on a rant about uh about Sean. Surely I can come up with some. Okay. Tristan de Grassy images. All right, let's go through this live. Okay, let's. Uh, resize this window. I guess I kind of like his print look right here. I guess it's totally also in character for him to look like this, but every time I see this, I think of how he looked in the don't look back or never look I'm pretty sure it's don't look back I forget what it's called every time because I hate that movie I think about how he looked in that and I just immediately think yeah because I hate that movie um I don't like the white pale blonde hair on him uh just me I like you know the brown that kind of color the, the the dark brown is interesting it's okay i don't like how greasy it looks um 
I do kind of like more chonk Tristan because I thought he was adorable. Uh, and then Tristan, like, next class season one and up is like, okay, I guess. I guess I don't have a lot of, like, thoughts about him other than, like, eh, he's fine. He's just not my style. I can't help it. He's not my style. It was interesting how he tried to dress so professionally in season two because he was like school president or something. I can't even swear. I'm that drunk apparently. Okay. The only thing I liked about the Eminem phase was everyone wearing headphones around their necks. Yeah. I unironically like that for some reason. I don't know why. I just like that image. Um, like Sean, Jay, and Alex running around their headphones. That's a look to me. Oh my god, the headphones. That's okay. So we did Tristan. We're going to do, apparently, spinner necks, which I did anticipate, so I did grab pictures of, but I need to use the bathroom, so BRB. Keep it up with the recommendations of who to roast. I've not seen Ashley yet. I came so prepared to talk about Ashley. Maybe it's because I'm not going to roast her too much, or at least not going to roast her for the goth phase. I don't know. We'll see. Um, thought Liberty looked good. Doesn't suit her, but it's cute. It was. It was. I like her. I liked her faux greaserness. I also just realized I threw my phone earlier. Oh well. Dear that I'm in love with you. Man, I'm so drunk that I'm stinky. You know what I want to do? I've been meaning to learn the lyrics to Last Exit, and I kind of want to sing it. If I get enough interest in the chat, maybe I will. Okay. Oh, shoot. Who's next? Who's next? Oh, my God. Okay. I think it was kind of spinner, but as I realized, I think someone mentioned Toby looking better than JT. Hold on. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what order things went in. I'm losing track of this, but Toby looks better than JT. I don't know. I have no real thoughts on Toby or JT's, uh, fashion. I don't know why, but, like, Toby in, like, sw like sweatsuit in Season 7 did not look good to me. I don't know, but either way, mm, no opinion. Okay, Spinner, though. Spinner. <laughs> oh, Spinner. Spinner, 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 Spinner. In Season 4, I liked his hair like this. 
when it stayed like this. See, the problem was, a lot of times in the episodes, his, some of his hair will, like, flip to the wrong side, you know, the shaved side. So then it, like, gives him a weird... I don't know how to describe it. Like, it's a, ba it's a bad look. Like, a little bit like this, but, like, there's this one moment when he's crying in the car wanting to, like, drive around drunk that I particularly think about where he does not look good. Like, this is a hairstyle that's very easy to fuck up. And it's sad, sad, sad. I don't like Tristan's dark hair, sorry. This is just a flashback. We might have to fight. I might have to become rivals with you. <laughs> Not just kidding. I'm curious, though. I explain. I I'm curious. Like, I just want to know. I like hearing other people's ideas about fashion that, you know, differ from mine. Go ahead. Yeah, let me know. First season is the only one I think stands out to me. Okay. Um... I gotta say, though, like, season three, early season four, Spinner, no good. Dame de all. Eh. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> like, Dylan wore this hair way better than Spinner. Like, it's of the time, but... No, I don't like it. Don't like it one bit. One bit at all. No. No, 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 no. I way prefer Spinner with, like, short hair. Like this. Or, like, uh, in, um... Season 2 of Next Class, where he has got basically buzz cut. Like, he, it just better fits his face. The long curls, nah. Well, I guess they technically are short curls. Who should not fireworks in my stream? Fuck off. But yeah, no. Short hair spinner, technically better. Like, I will be controversial and like late season four spinner's hair, but it needs to be done right. The hair needs to stay on the right side of the head. Fucking stay on the right side of the park. Mm. But otherwise, basically, season five spinner up is the best hair spinner. Gotta say. I didn't even like his, like, uh, what's his name? Ice Cube? I don't know. Whatever that rapper's name was. Like, you know, like, s blonde, like, spike hair. I thought it was, you know, of the time, but, like, nah. Mm, no good. Eh. Mm. Yo kanai desu yo. Trying to figure out Japanese while drunk. Hmm. Taihen Please sing last exit. It'll make my day. I will. I will put that a little towards the end so then we can keep going on Degrassi stuff. But I will happily do it. See, even one person wanting me to do it. I will happily do it. <laughs> I'm sorry for my psyche singing voice. Okay. Um. I would kill for Tristan's striped shirt. <laughs> I don't quite understand, but I can respect it. Uh, da -da 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 -da. My faves are probably Mile, Esme, and Allie. I can't say I really liked Allie's style too much. I guess it was too much, like girly girl of the time I was in high school so I can like I like it on her but I guess I have trouble like liking it because it's like 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 like, like it's the style that I don't like for myself and I think that's troublesome it's not Spinner's fault he has bad hair it's the drama <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Miles did have good style. I think he wore color pants 
better than most people I've seen. I've tried to wear bright red pants. I remember begging my mom for years to wear bright red pants in, in high school. And I wasn't allowed to. So after I moved out, I bought myself some bright red pants. I don't like it. But Miles, he looks good in it. And also Esme. I did download a picture of Esme, I thought. Either I'm too drunk and it's here and I'm not seeing it, or I did not. Uh, here's a cast picture. Yeah, Esme's style in general. I love it so much. It's so, like, smart and stylish. I, uh... See, that's something I love about Esme's style and then also, like, Yael's style, especially in season four. It just becomes so keener, so like nerdy modern nerdy i love it so much love 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 uh tristan's dark hair i don't know why i don't like it maybe i reckon it washes him out or something i can't explain fair 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 uh spinners it's not spinners fault he has bad hair it's a trauma that he kind of created but still fair <laughs> Okay, uh, da, 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 da. yeah, um, Miles asked me, Bess, Elvis, Ashley versus Sav versus, did Drew dresses? He did dress, oh, kind of elvis -y, but, shoot, Elvis, Sav versus Ashley, Sav versus Drew. I hate to say it, but Sav wins hands down, like no competition. I mean, it's almost like Ashley didn't try. Like, Sav went hard for Elvis. <laughs> like, uh, let me see if I can pull it up. This is not working. Well, well. Yeah, I mean, he just looks so cute. He makes a good Elvis and the chest hair, that helps. He just makes a really damn good Elvis. Ashley can try, but she, she can't measure up. And Drew, he's a little too boyish to really make a good Elvis. Whereas Sav, he's got, he's got the face he knows how to do the elvis look <laughs> that's not even the elvis look but sav knows how to do it that's the important part i don't understand why tristan dresses like an old man next class that's kind of the fashion suddenly like your grandpa's clothes are in style we better all suggest Ashley. You better fucking do because I, I am ready to talk Ashley, okay? Rapid fire, let's go. Bad look. I fucking hate her hair, okay? I don't like the no part, like, you know, face being f like, uh, you know, hair kind of coming around the face. I don't like it, okay? I don't like it. You know, if you're gonna do that, put bangs or something. Bad, bad, bad 2000s hair. I hate it. Okay, uh, next, uh, season two, before she goes goth, mm. don't like it either, like, I don't know why, okay, maybe it's just for her, but I don't like, you know, the pinned up, like, buns kind of thing, and hair, like, too early 2000s, I don't like it, bad, bad, very bad, okay, bad, Ashley kind of just looks like a Disney Channel character. I can't say I agree, but that's that's one way to think of her. Uh, not quite long hair, but like longer hair than she'll have at the end of season two. I like that. Good, good hair. I love her short hair. I like her goth look here. Mwah! Perfect. I love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. And then her hardcore, more goth, like really short hair. It's not for me, but she rocks it. Ah, beautiful. 
Chef's kiss. I love it. If you're gonna do early 2000s, be goth. <laughs> That's the message of this whole thing. Like, ah, uh, I just, I love her hair. I love her style. I love her makeup. It's great. What else can I say about it? I love it. Uh, yeah, another picture of it. Oh, she, she does the mesh. Uh, under layer so well. Oh, and she has the eyes for the eyeliner and the lipstick and the piercings. It's so good. It's so good. I love it so much. And then she toned down a bit in seasons three and four. In season three, I liked her kind of more punky look. I thought that was cute. I liked it. In season four, it was kind of like a little bit. Like I could really feel her toning down more, but still keeping the punkishness. Like that was fine. I like her growing out her hair just a little bit more. It was adorable. It was adorable. I love it. But then, oh yeah, more of early 2000s means suck. As I get more drunk, I'm getting way, way too into this. <laughs> and then we get to season like six. I don't know, it's like, okay. I can kind of see it as Ashley, but I like, so, okay, here's a fun story. Her hat at the end of season five, I don't think I have a picture, but like she wears this big like hat, like the one Manny's got on right here. Like the one Manny's got on right here and she's got the, the long curls. I love, in, in the Degrassi uh, graphic novels, there's this whole story, like a side, like story thing about like getting Ashley to stop wear her hat. It was kind of funny, but also like, I don't know. Ashley became boring. And maybe it's just because the style of the time became boring, but Meh. Lord Farquaad aesthetic. Oh my god, I gotta look back and see when this was commented. Like, what exactly was Lord Farquaad's aesthetic? Like, <laughs> I gotta know. <laughs> oh, if I recall, Ashley even became goth to impress Ellie, then dumb Jimmy because he didn't like it. Um, I wouldn't say it like that. She became goth because that's how she was feeling. And then she felt the pressure to be more goth or like goth in the way of Ellie um, because she was friends with Ellie. And then dump Jimmy because Jimmy didn't like respect her feeling and wanting to express herself as goth. <sighs> Again, I am the only Allie, uh, Ashley defender around here. But that's okay. That's the cross I'm going to die on. Bro, I was just thinking about the Manny Thong episode. Hello, Miss Misera. Yeah, that was an interesting episode, wasn't it? I, I, my next, not the video that's coming out tomorrow, but my next video, Emma is done dirty by how people view her in that episode, okay? Emma is not the villain, you fools. Emma has a lot of problems, but nah, it's Manny. Manny was the problem in that episode. I'm way too drunk for this. So that's Ashley. Ashley usually is great, but it got weird when Ashley and Marco had the same hair for a short while. It was confusing. 
Hmm. I never found it confusing, but I can respect that. I can respect it. Marco had some interesting care choices, I gotta say. You got so angry about this. Oh no, I can I cannot remember what I got so angry about. Oh no. Uh, probably way too big and maybe would need some video. Most memorable prom dance looks. I need to rewatch the grass to really be able to comment. The only thing that stands out to me is like Paige and Manny were in the same dress. Who wore it better? I can't tell. <laughs> I think Ashley's fine. I just don't understand her character. I couldn't figure her out. It seems inconsistent, but that was maybe that was my issue. She wasn't inconsistent. Like the problem was she didn't know what she wanted. Like she constantly thinks she knows what she wants and then constantly finds out no that's not she's constantly dissatisfied with what she's looking for in life so she quickly changes that that's ashley's problem like it's not necessarily an inconsistent character it's that she doesn't have a good grasp she doesn't do introspection well that's really her problem That sucks, so that's what's everyone wearing on TikTok now. What's everyone wearing on TikTok now? I don't know, I'm not on TikTok, so I don't know. Also, I'm about out of drink. Oh. Mm. Hi, Scooter. Oh, you came at a bad time, because I'm out of drink. I like Manny's hat, but I don't like Ashley's hat. Can't tell you why. Don't make the rules. Well, apparently Jimmy hated the hat in the graphic novel, so you're not alone. Hmm. All right, I'm trying to keep up with the chat. Katie, you can see how much the trauma both uh, Spinner Man have gone through. I like Katie's, not goth look, but like her black hair and eyeliner. I love that look. It's so cute. I like it a lot. I felt it helped make her a little less generic. And she wore it well. <sighs> I'm having trouble keeping up with the chat, so I don't know if I've missed anything. Uh... It sucks, because, like, Ashley's hat and wearing that was probably what I looked like in 7th and 8th grade when I wore that kind of hat. I wish I knew where any of those hats went, but I don't know. They're long gone by now if they exist. No, oh, I'm stuck with this stinking hat. I mean, it's not a stinking hat. It's a good hat. It's a good hat, but I'm just drunk enough to toss to the side now. Oh, no. No, I don't like how my hair is without the hat. See, what I need to do is I need to somehow make a cloche hat like they wore in the 1920s because most people don't have 1920s clothing because, you know, it's way old. <sighs> okay, back on topic. <laughs> I do like how Ashley's style progressed with the character. I don't know why, but I am obsessed with style evolution, so Ashley is interesting to me. I agree! I agree! See, Ashley's style, like, it makes sense. Ellie's a little less so, but Ashley just makes sense because it goes with her character. Of course it goes with her character to look like how modern girls look, because, like, you know, she was in England, so she was, like, you know, adjusting herself to be someone different. And then she's trying to find herself to be a whole new thing now with Jimmy in season uh, six. Like, it just makes sense. And that's the biggest thing that I want with the grassy characters. That their clothing styles make sense. I don't want it to be like, oh, they just became normal because it's easier to dress them as the conventional fashion sense, I want it to be that they dress according to their characters. Because I 
can say for myself. Way past college, I still dressed emo or tried to capture the emo aesthetic because I never felt like I achieved that in high school. And I never felt that I could express that in high school. And even in the two years of college, like once a week at most, I would go in and, you know, dress emo, but like it wasn't enough. So I don't think it's fair to be like, oh, they're just emo for a couple seasons, that's it. No, it's a transition. Transition. Oh my god, I'm falling apart. <laughs> I feel like I'm the olden style Disney version of like drunk. Like, hiccup, hiccup, hiccup. <laughs> Is the undiagnosed person due? Yes, agree. Like, not only does Ashley not know who she is, but she also had depression in season three. Unironically, I'm pretty sure. I'm not a therapist or a psychologist or anything, but I'm pretty sure. I love him, Jin. Look with the cherry ear earrings. Not if I'm not taking the cherry dress too. It's so cute in, in, in Imogen. Yeah, Imogen. I made a video once about how chameleon she is. And I love it kind of because it makes sense with her character. Like, she goes from like goth the kind of more emo when she was interested in Eli to fashionista when she was with uh, Fiona and then she became hipster when she was on her own. It was great. I love her. I love it for her. Ashley is still learning who she is. Yeah, that, like, I, I wonder though, does she ever learn who she's interested, who she, she is? Because she seems to really struggle with that. Who is she and what does she want? I don't know if Ashley's the kind of person to ever figure that out. It's sad to th think of, but I don't know. I would hope by now she's discovered some, but unfortunately some people never grow out of it. I'm going to use the bathroom and get a drink. Mm. <laughs> Give me some more suggestions or I'm going to sing Last Exit. I say, say like a threat, but I've got the hiccups, so. Champagne. Your alcohol doesn't thrill me at all. So tell me why should it be true that I get a kick out of you? <sighs> 1920s Degrassi prom one, please. Please make that so I can roast how bad 
1920s, like the, the modern idea of 1920s fashion is please, please for me. <sighs> I have gone off the rails and I only slightly apologize. Shoot, come on. All right. God. The fact that anyone's still here watching this train wreck is amazing to me. The chameleon view. Yes, that was great. Thank you. Thank you. I think I still stand by everything I said. I haven't watched it. Like, after I put out a video, I don't remember much of what I said, but I think I still stand by it. So, thank you. All right, give me more people to roast. Who did I miss in the chat who I forgot to roast? In the meantime, so then I, no. Uh, Maya Matlin, last exit. OMG, that's sad I feel for Ashley because I struggle with who I really am as well. That sucks. While I'm not sure if Ashley ever found out who she is, I don't think it's impossible that she did. Okay? I think, I don't, like, don't take this as, like, because I'm not sure about Ashley that I don't, I wouldn't have, like, it's hopeless for you. Because, honestly, finding out who, like, who you are is a process. And... It takes a while to do that. Like, for many years, I've leaned a lot into emo, like, sort of emo, punky, gothy looks for many years. And I only recently found out that I love historical fashion and I want to look like someone from the 1920s recently. And I'm 27. It can be a long process, and I can't say I'm even at the end of it. Sometimes we go through phases, like, over our whole lifetime. Ashley, personally, as a person, I wonder if she will find out who she is and wants to be. But I'm certain that you're going to find who you are and want to be, too. Scratch it. I'm certain you're going to find who you are and want to be soon. And even if that changes, that won't negate who you thought you were a while ago. Because I still stand by the part of me that dressed emo. I stand by the part of me that was utterly depressed to where I would only want to wear black. Your past is not cringe. It was just a different phase of you. And I think that's something that... I want modern Degrassi to teach us because I don't think modern media really thinks about that kind of question. All right. Gotta pack my bags, leave my world behind, take a different road, I know it's my time. To open up my heart for another crowd Play it strong and sing it loud There's empty places in my life and I need to breathe There's empty spaces on the math waiting, map waiting there for me I'll take the last exit to freedom The last chance to be free and at the first sight of tomorrow Feels like freedom to me Oh, there's hope out on the horizon A light only I can see Oh, there's hope out on the horizon A light only I can see 
It's the last exit to freedom, the last chance to be free. That's not complete, because I know there's more lyrics, okay? I listened to the demo track. There is more to it. Like, something about strings on my guitar. There's more to it. These lyrics are, whoa. Most early holiday and audio. Oh, that screams early 2000s to me. <laughs> I am ready for that. <laughs> All I want to say is I love my girl Maya so much and love her struggles and how much she handled. I know. I love Maya so much. I hate how much people dislike her. I hate how much people misrepresent her. Maya's great. Like, she's not perfect. No one's perfect. She does Degrassi shows. She's got a lot of flaws. Maya does write good music sometimes, though. I gotta say. Like, uh, hey, hey, I said no way. Hey, hey, it's not okay. You say I gotta chill, but guess what? Just think about yourself. I messed up. Ah, like, ah, I love Not Okay so much. Maya writes good songs. I know it's someone writing for the character of Maya, but ah, I unironically have some of her songs on my playlists. Okay. Oh, shit. Get, go, go away. No, fuck off. Wrong. Okay, basically, I think in that scene, Holly J and Anya basically looked like this. Like, uh, so 2000s. Like, even down to the, like, whatever the stockings are. Uh, the layering. So 2000s. I gotta say, though. I have to respect anyone who could get a clean ponytail like this. Because as someone who does not have fine, straight hair, it always came out messy. But, ah, anyone who could get their hair back and slick like that, I gotta respect at least a little bit. I don't, I don't necessarily like it. Like, it's a kind of cute, but it's also like, of its time in a way that I'm like I'm glad that it stayed of its time I also in general don't like the pulled back look I just don't that's a personal bias I have but yeah so by default I have to dislike their pulled back ponytail layered look but i do think it is if i had to choose an outfit of the era this might be it it is technically cute but i would not choose it over other ones i don't i suppose this like last exit is not on spotify um it is definitely um shoba i think is the artist who wrote the songs for maya she is on youtube if you want to give her a listen i actually download some of her songs um uh like basically it's her versions like her demo versions of what ended up in the show and i like them like she writes good music yeah, so I'd recommend checking her out. Um, oh yeah, I agree. The part of you that dressed emo is still part of who you are as a person. I love that. Yeah, that's the thing that I struggle with, with people who find things cringe, who fe people who find their past cringe, people who disavow their past. Like, I disavow a lot of things as a joke, but honestly, it's still a part of me. The person who in 2013 was trying to like figure out eyeliner makeup to not be a raccoon, but like, you know, wanted to get that 
got the emo look. The person who in 2008 wanted to figure out the skirt over pants uh, style, like that's still me. And I can't hate them because they are me. They made who I am. I dress very differently now, but I hate the idea of like, oh, I was cringe, so I have to like hate on the person who I was before because I was so cringe. I hate that. And like getting a bit real, but like I feel like that fuels a lot of hate towards Degrassi too because a lot of people find cringe the characters who act like them as they were in high school. Like, they just somehow try to divorce themselves from who they were in school as though they're way better than that. It's, it's, it's just stupid. I hate it. I hate people who act like teenagers are lesser because they act honestly. I hate the... Basically, the... What do you call it? Uh, what's the word? For le lack of a better word, the hatred towards sincerity. It bothers me how much people refuse to relate to their past selves and therefore refuse to relate to the characters of Degrassi. I see a lot of people who grew up with TNG just refuse to relate to modern teenagers because they weren't exactly like them as they were in school. That wasn't how they experienced high school, so therefore, Degrassi must have gone off the rails in some way. Oh, they got way too PC. No. High school changed, but you didn't. It bothers me. It bothers me a lot. Empathy is a core trait, a core value to me. And it bothers me when it's not to others. But let's have another drink. <clears throat> I've had the one whisper hug song in my head for days to me insane. I am not huge into whisper, whisper hug. I'm sorry. I'm honestly Maya is the only musician I really care for. I mean, of course, other than everybody wants something they'll never give up. I mean, that's classic, but give her. The rest of the music is kind of give or take. Except for Paige's song. Paige's song was good. I just can't listen to it very much. I'm harmonizing with you, lol. Oh, I wish I could hear it. They were definitely committed to itself, for sure. Oh, I'm not sure. Um, makes sense that Holly J and therefore Anya would follow the trends. Well, yeah, because it was modern, so of course they would look that way. Doesn't mean it was a good fashion choice, but hey, modern does not mean good. Am I right? Uh, hello, Electrolyton. Uh, do you think Esme could hang herself? I'm not sure what kind of question is that. I would not want anyone to kill himself by any means, so... Uh, I, don't, I don't know what you're asking there. Not okay is amazing. Yes, agree, agree. Hey, hey, not okay. Hey, hey, I said no way. You say I gotta chill, but guess what? Just think about yourself because you're messed up. Ah, oh, that is an ath anthem. I love it. Mwah! Perfect. I agree with you guys think concept. I don't want to sound elitist, Oh, hello below that. I don't want to sound loose, but I do think that it's an aspect a lot of people miss when they watch a show. I don't think it's elitist because I think that's just how it is. Like, one of the reasons why I struggle being in Degrassi fan areas is because there's 
such a lack of empathy. Degrassi really relies on understanding and being open to empathizing with the characters and understanding where they come from. But a lot of fans don't want to do that. A lot of fans just... They want to, like, they, they condemn the characters for not basically acting like how they think they should act. Which is utter bullshit. I hate it. <sighs> oh, change herself, not hanged. Okay. No, I don't think she could have changed herself. I think she was at a point where she really needed professional help. Like, it seems all the... All signs point to borderline personality disorder, and that's not something you can just fix yourself. That's something you need professional help to do. And I don't know if it's necessarily fixable, but that's not something you just magic yourself okay with. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I, I get it now. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, I loved the look of Holly Jane. It was so adorable and how Anya always copied. I guess I can kind of see how it's adorable, but I feel bad for Anya because she's clearly someone who needs to learn how to be her own person. And I think she was trying to do that by joining the army. Um... Oh, I regret so much because they find a way to make me care about just every character, at least in one way or another. I know, and that's one of the reasons why I love Degrassi too. The point is empathy. The point is understanding people unlike you. I've never been someone like Paige or Ashley, but I love them. I get them. I don't have to like them, but I understand them. They're not bad characters because they act unlike me. I don't have, like, Claire. She does a lot of things that I think are stupid, but I get her. And I like that I'm allowed to get her without being forced by the show to just think of her as evil or bad in everything she does. Like, for the most part, the show doesn't tell us how to think about characters. It shows real people responding to realistic circumstances and the different ways they do that. That's one of the things I try to show in my abortions in Degrassi video. There's so many ways to approach the same topic. Of course they have to show the same like storyline multiple times because there's not one way to do it. You just have to. How do those immature Degrassi teenagers act like immature Degrassi teenagers? I know! I know! It bothers me how much fans of Degrassi expect Degrassi characters to be perfect, otherwise they're villains of some sort. Like, I know Eli is toxic. Duh! But that doesn't make him a bad character. Do you think Zig and Maya could get back together? And do you think Zimmy, Jimmy and Trina got married? Do you think Jake and Katie could be back together? That's a lot of questions. Zig and Maya. Um, I think it's canon uh, from what I've heard from on Twitter that they did get back together. And I can see that. Uh, let's see. Jimmy and Trina? I don't know. I didn't care too much about them. Maybe they got married. Um... Jake and Katie, I kind of hope, because they seem good for each other, but I don't know. Don't particularly care for Clegg, but some of his, kings, his scenes were heavy hair for me. Yeah. Craig definitely was. He went through, like, a lot of powerful things, and Jake Epstein, the actor for Craig, definitely is a good actor. Doesn't mean I like his character, though, because, like, he can be kind of really a shithead. I mean, I feel the same way for Joey, too. Like, I hate him for most of junior high and high. But, like, he's a good character because he acts like a real person, even if I hate him. Like, I can hate real people, too. It's not just fictionous char fictionous fictional characters. I'm too drunk.
If you don't empathize with the characters, you're really missing out on a big aspect of the show, at least in my opinion. I agree, because that's one of the things I like most about Degrassi. They want, they try to make you empathize, help you understand why someone would choose the things they choose, why someone like Ali would, even though she's got all the brains in the world, like, she chooses trying to look good look popular and basically try to have the popular girl experience of Degrassi of, of high school like you know when we stand outside of ourselves and like you know we watch his viewers we're like well duh you're trying to force yourself into a hole that doesn't fit but it's like Degrassi tries to help us understand why someone like Allie wants those things it doesn't condemn her for it, but, like, yeah, it shows the consequences of those actions, but it helps us try to, it tries to help us empathize and understand. And that's why I love Degrassi, because it tries to make you understand people unlike yourself. That's why it's important for them to continue showing us, like, queer people and People like Yael, who I didn't realize I was so much like until I saw their journey. It's really, really important to be shown people unlike you. Not only so then, like, maybe find out you are exactly like them, but also so you understand them. Anya is a lot like Ashley in a way, not knowing who she is yet. I think so. I would say so too. I think that that comes more from trying to fight her follower nature and trying to use that for something good. More so than Ashley's just like struggling in general. But yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think that's a good assessment. Honestly, aside from the obvious villains, there's nobody I actually hand to Grassy. That's how I feel too, below the dot. There's characters I don't like as much, but not many I hate hate. There's plenty I hate for how they view the world and how they treat things. Like, I, I don't like Owen. I don't like, uh, Derek very much, but I wouldn't consider them bad characters or say Degrassi did a bad job because they're not good people. According to those people, everyone wants to be a villain considering no one is perfect. Yeah. I don't like the idea that a character has to be perfect or else they're a villain. I mean, I understand how media has taught us that. And I understand how, um, especially pre haze Code and its effects have taught us, like, where the characters have to be obvious villains and there can be no gray zones. But I don't like how people think like that, too. It's an easy way to consider things, but not a good one. Did anyone realize Jake Epstein was in the Umbrella Academy? I screamed when I realized it was him. I heard that he was going to be in it. I did not watch until he was in it because, um, I think, I don't know what episode I got to the Umbrella Academy. So, once upon a time, I had an idea where, so I knew Umbrella Academy came, came out on Netflix. It was like season one. And I bought the Umbrella Academy books one and two that were available at the time to read them and then compare them to the uh the show which they're not really the show goes in a bit of a different direction from the books i can tell you that but i also don't like the books too much like i prefer the second book way more than the first book which umbrella academy season one is based off of but i basically stopped watching partway through season one so I never got to the Jake Epstein part of season two. I am sure he did well, but I found 
I don't care. See, and <laughs> as an emo myself, I ha am of the opinion that Gerard Way is not a very good storyteller. Just saying. Like, I read Danger Days, uh, like, the, the uh, True Lives of the Fabulous Killjoys. Like, I read that comic, and it is kind of bull. Like, it doesn't make sense. I would make a whole video about it, how it doesn't make sense. If I thought it would be popular, if it, if I thought anyone was would be interested in that, but I don't think so. So I'm just gonna give my thoughts to myself. I'm in no way defending the way Esme treated Miles, Sig, or Frankie. However, I do think she was gaslit by a lot of people about a lot of things even before uh, everything went down to. Hmm, that's an interesting, an interesting way of thought. I know there was definitely a lot of wrongful, like, a lot of stupid slut-shaming towards Esme. Like, she wasn't coming out from a good position in the first place, but I think the slut-shaming she got was kind of really stupid, too. Um, hello, Trinket Mage! No, who is Jake in Umbrella Academy? I don't know, who who is he in, in Umbrella Academy? I haven't, like I said, I haven't watched to the point where he's in it, and I wonder how different it is from the books. Um, does this make me feel more stuff if she treated Miles, Zig and Frankie really bad after abusing them? I'm sure she does, because, like, I'm sure she does feel bad about how she treated them, but, like, her mental illness, like, kind of prevents her from being different, I guess. That's kind of my understanding of bipolar, uh, no, borderline personality disorder, where it's like, you can kind of recognize that you're not doing the right things, but it's also like, well, what else can you do? Because you feel like people are disengaging from you, and that's the worst thing, because... Borderline personality disorder is focused entirely on making people stay attached to you, whatever means necessary. We see that in how Esme uh, fakes a suicide attempt to try to keep Miles, with how um, Esme tries to be sexual and do, like, fake a, an allergic reaction to bees in order to keep Zig concerned about her. It's all about trying to keep your attachments even though you're not really healthy to enough to have them, like, in a healthy way. I'm sure it's, like, in, on several levels she does feel guilty, but the problem is... Because of her mental illness, she struggles to do anything else. Like, what else can you do but, like, to make people stay with you? Because the idea is, like, you have to convince them to stay with you. They didn't hate her getting Miles addicted to drugs. They didn't hate her on her private sex with Zig. Having sex with Zig, and that's not right. I don't think I understand. He's Alfonso in Sparrow Academy. Either they changed things for when Jake Epstein appeared, but I don't think I know what you're talking about, man. I think Way is a good storyteller, but bad at King. I luckily I can see what he's trying to do, but it's all over the place. Yeah, I see what he's trying to do, and I think it needs some refinement. Like the thing I think of is uh, the Killjoys uh, graphic novel. It could be good, but I it really needs ref it needs an editor, someone who can focus things and help things make sense. Like it's just kind of a hodgepodge of like, eh. That's kind of what I feel like. Like things are introduced, but they don't really go anywhere. Like it just kind of like ends for no reason. Like some so once upon a time I decided to make a sort of fanfic novel based on the world of of uh 
like the Danger Days album, but all of the secondary stuff I found seemed to kind of contradict a lot of stuff. Like, I don't understand how a society, like the way Gerard Way seemed to imagine it, would function. Like, it doesn't make sense. Like, basically where everyone's drugged up on stuff, like... Where does stuff happen, I guess? Like, where's the functional people? It just did not make sense to me. So that's, like, one of the ways that I struggle, like, understand Gerard Way's storytelling stuff. It sucks because I really like the aesthetic of the Danger Days uh, graphic novel, but it just does not make sense. Suddenly it's... There's some robot out in the desert that saves things, but also, like... The, the the girl is a bomb? I don't know. I am a My Chemical Romance fan, but I don't... I don't know if Gerard Way is a good storyteller. Like, in a way that makes sense. I'm going to run to the bathroom. BRB. Something they'll never give up. Everybody wants something, they'll take your money and never give up. Ding! Okay, what did I miss? <gasps> I think, uh, okay, I'm not spare, spare apart yet. Okay, yeah. Jacob seemed to play a new character from Sparrow Academy that's an alternate version of Umbrella Academy. Yeah, that's that wasn't in the second book to Umbrella Academy, which was out when the time that I bought it. I love the fact that Jake, he's a great actor. He's good. He's good. He's good. Hello, Shadow... Shadow Aqui. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Ah, yes. The last season, I was in confusion. Jake asked me... So nice to see him in something TV related. Didn't get enough of him, honestly. Also joined in expecting a lot more people here. Uh, yeah, not really. Uh, streams I do are very low key. <laughs> I'm not some big YouTuber like you might expect from some of my videos. Nah. We like to keep it homegrown and local. I don't know what I'm doing with my hands. I'm like flapping away now. One of these days I'm just gonna fly away like Osaka in uh, in Asumanga Daya. I'm <laughs> just saying. Yeah, but I'm pretty, pretty drunk now. Sorry joined right now because I don't know how fun Drunk Vamp is. I hope, I hope Drunk Vamp is very fun. I'm praying Trump fam vamp is very fun. The caller easy as me and Zig didn't defend her. She has every right to be upset, but they act like she didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. I don't like the slut shaming. There's a lot to accuse and hold Esme accountable for, but slut shaming? 
really? I... In, in the year of our Lord, 2022, no. No. No, 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 no. We like here in Spanish. You're so entertaining the law. Okay, thank God. Okay, as long as I'm entertaining, I'm good. Qui. Uh, uh, I took French. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't take a Spanish. Uh, I agree. We need more Jake in our lives. <laughs> Haven't read the books, so I have no idea what they're like compared to the show. I think it's been a while since I've read the books. But like in book two, I think I think Viola is in some sort of coma and then there's some sort of like go back to the 1960s like time travel plot line. It's been a while since it's like it was when season one came out when I read the book so it's been years. I didn't expect to talk Umbrella Academy and My Chemical Romance on this stream so I did not come prepared. I'm sorry. I remember enjoying book two more than I enjoyed book one. That's all I can say. I guess I didn't like um, Umbrella Academy, like the show. I just felt like it took it in a different direction from the graphic novels, just a little bit. I can just, I'd have, honestly, I think at this point I need to rewatch and reread the books. Rewatch the show and reread the books to really explain why I feel the way I do about Umbrella Academy. All I can say is I wish I could care more. I'm just going to continue for the most part like as they were. I don't really like the um decay song that they put out like it's okay but that's the trouble my chemical romance they're very good at sometimes just being okay not really anything to write home about some albums are definitely better than others have we covered pages style no we haven't and you're right that's a travesty that we haven't i don't think i've got good pictures of page anyways Oh, before we move on, I want to pay homage to, I think her name's Alice. Her style is mwah, awesome. She's like the uh, alternate cause girl of the 80s. I love it. Like alternate cause girl without being punk. I love it. She walked so that Liz can run. Just saying. Hmm. Page of style. Page of style. Where's page? Page. Did I only get one picture? Okay, well. Page of style. I mean, it was okay. It was whatever was popular at the time. I didn't like the sequence. I don't like sequence in general. I don't know, Paige is okay. I don't particularly like her. Just like... <sighs> Am I the only one who didn't quite notice Paige's mullet at the beginning of season two? I can't have been right. Like, I can't have been. It can't be me. Please don't let it be me only. Anyone who'd be upset to find that in their boyfriend's group chat... Anyone would be upset to find their boyfriend to that and then to exclude her from the camping trip. You kind of see how that feels. Yeah. 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 Not to say Esme was right, but... Zig's a sussy baka. I can... I see that I'm winding down. Yeah. I'm starting to wind down, so.
That sounds similar to season two of the show, to be honest. Hmm. Maybe it is. I don't know. Again, I didn't watch the show, but yeah, I can see it. Don't call me babe when you know my name. You're not the hunter, I'm not your game. This is it, you gotta know when to quit, and you better get used to it. You undress me with your eyes. You're not a winner, I'm not your prize. This is it, you gotta know when to split, cause I'm get, getting kinda sick of your shit. Don't try to touch me, don't try to run me. They say that you want me. Hey, this is not okay. Hey, hey, I said no way. Don't say I gotta chill, that's not cool. Just take care of yourself, cause I'm no fool. Hey, this is not okay. Hey, hey, I said no way. You say I gotta chill, but guess what? Just take care of yourself, cause you're messed up. Ha! Unprompted. Take that. I don't know. Al- Alex. Take that, Alex. I never had any particular like for your style anyway, so... Yeah. <laughs> Alright. I think it's about time to wrap up, so... Any last thoughts? Come on. The Brett is everything. Sorry. <sighs> That's the problem with low latency. I'm divorced from the context. Kind of like Japanese, but at least in Japanese, you can kind of under, like, you can context clues the god. Ah. I have a hole in my mouth. So that went right up to my nose. Or maybe it's not because of the hole in my mouth. I don't know. Either way, the burp went up to my nose, so that sucks. Hi, it's Drunk Fam. Um, Sober Fam can't come to the phone right now. Oh, they're dead. <laughs> no, they're not. They're going to be back here tomorrow to put a thumbnail to the video that's supposed to come out tomorrow. Ah! Uh... Paige's, Paige's denim bag dragging on the ground during her driver list is iconic. <laughs> yes! I don't think it's a function of how Esme feels. Her dysfunction is how she handles those feelings. Fearing abandonment puts her in, de- in desperate, impulsive, destructive state. Normal emotions for people to feel. It, the, the, pro- the mental illness comes from how... It's being handled, I guess. Everyone acts like she's crazy. The things she was right about, all the friends hating her, but they acted like she was always crazy for thinking that. Yeah, she was being gaslit about people slut-shaming her. Like, what the fuck? Like, we have contraceptives and shit. Like, Sex is fun to some people, okay? Some people use it to express themselves. Like, why in all your purity politics should sex be regulated to be only one partner ever? Because I'm not realistic. Oh, I need to go. Do you get on my shirt or me? I don't know. I just splashed stuff for me. Can I say, Alexa looks... Gorgeous, as always. I guess. I've never... Lex... Lex... Alex? I've got Alexis at work, so I'm getting confused. Alex has been okay to me. I prefer more... More slightly femmy girls. Just saying. I never read the graphic novels. Not sure where to read them or how to find them. Um, Amazon. Fuck Amazon, by the way. But Amazon definitely has them. I'm sure other comic stores might have them, considering how popular Umbrella Academy is. But I bought mine from Amazon. So 
I, as someone who is interested in the different forms of media, I'd recommend reading them just to see how things went down in the comics versus the show. Yeah. Uh, you think they actually hated her? Most of them didn't know her. <sighs> Unfortunately, knowing people is not the threshold that decides whether or not they hate people. Like, a lot of people don't know a lot of people, but they've already decided that they just hate them because of what they heard about them or their impression of them. Look at how Republicans treat those unlike them. Uh, more, more importantly, women or queer people. Bye, it's been real. Okay, bye, uh, this just flashback. Uh, uh, thank you for being here. I really am glad you've been here. Um, da -da -da. I like it here. It's chill. Thank you, Shadow Kwai. Kwee. Shadow Key. See, I think of it as in French. Shadow Key is how I would think of it. Uh, please feel free to <laughs> correct me. But I'm glad it's been chill. Hate maybe, but def not didn't like. Oh, I'm not sure. Sorry, I keep going on and on about essay, but I'm very passionate about this. No, don't, uh, don't, don't, uh, feel bad about it. Like, I like talking about Esme because I feel like that's an unresolved, like, story that, like, is worth talking about. Mm, they could have gotten to know her at the camera here, but the strong way they came on was very often. That's the trouble about people. A lot of people, excuse me, aren't willing to just get to know people before deciding how they feel about them. They'll often just be fine with how, like, the things they've heard about them and just decide that's who they are. That's just how people are. And it sucks. Pete actually mentions the mullet and Craig said something about her, something to her about child labor. I think that was uh, with the JT, like, having to, like, work to get Paige's mullet fixed. I don't remember her mullet being ever, like, that bad, though. Like, let's look up season two page. I've had my bags, leave the world behind. Take a different road, I know it's my time to open up my heart for another ground. I might not be finding good picks, but I don't think she had that bad of a mullet. Just saying, Paige, just saying. Yeah, Paige had to clean the garage in order to get her uh, mole fixed or have GT work for it somehow. Hot damn, it's been like almost three hours now. I feel like it's about time to go. Uh, any last, um, characters I haven't talked about that you want me to talk about the fashion of? Or anything you else, else you want me to, to, to talk about? Let me know. Uh, yeah, I am feeling that I need to go to bed. And I still need to scoop a scooter box, so. And I got to get this makeup off my face. I don't know if it's come through, but I am actually wearing eyeliner. And not emo eyeliner for once. Ha! Ah! I thought the chat paused. No, as far as I know, it hasn't paused. Oh, I think it's okay. Oh. I at least am glad that I streamed tonight. Because I think... 
it turned out way better than I thought it would. Because I thought I was only going to get one or two people uh, come by and talk the grassy fashion. Like, I wasn't sure I was even going to be able to maintain a stream on my own without Tarbuck. <laughs> I guess it shows that we don't need no man. <laughs> yeah. Um, good night, fam. Thank you, Infamous J. Um, also known as Mr. Midnight on on uh Discord, Mr. Midnight. I think of uh, the the Phantom of the Opera on Ice, like song Mr. Midnight. When I think of that name, um, and see the stream is struggling. So I think it's about time to go. <sighs> Thank you for the music. I don't know the words of the song, so. Heaven, I'm in heaven. The cares that hung around me through the week seem to vanish like a gambler's lucky streak. When we're out together, dancing cheek to cheek. Thank you all for joining me. Thank you, Upsy. Thank you, Mr. Balance. Why did I call you Mr. Midnight? Ah! I'm stupid. I'm good. Have a good night. Thank you, Trinket Mage. Thank you, everyone, for joining me. Like, yeah, I think it's time to go. I'm at that drunk phase where I'm just, in general, tired and not really able to keep up good conversation. And I 